Greetings, Internets. Think of 2112 here with Jennifer, aka one half of the <laughs> You don't have to say one half, the other half's here. It is 1659 Eastern Daylight Time on Friday, the 23rd of September, 2011. Happy fall, guys. And let's play Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. So I'm derping around here in Nimbus Land. Um, so this is post-commentary because GarageBand decided to quit when I was about halfway through the recording. And, of course, it didn't save any of what I had recorded already. Because, of course not. That would be too easy. Garage Band, why are you so silly? <laughs> Who needs an autosave, anyway? <laughs> so, I realized you that... You can seltzer away from the PS2. Sorry. <laughs> I, I would rather you didn't get seltzer on the PS2, because it's not even mine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gratuitous property destruction. That's kind of property destruction. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yes, shopping. shopping. I'm gonna put that on the desk. Wait a minute, what am I. From you and your beverage. Okay, so apparently I decided that the work pants were still better. Ah, uh, war fan. There's only one weapon for Peach that actually does substantial damage. I mean, I shouldn't put it that way. There's only one weapon for Peach that actually makes her a good, like, fighter. I see. And I'm selling most of my stuff, which is good, because I need the coins. At least now I need the coins. Short the best money. The best kind of money. And I'm looking for hidden blocks, it looks like. There's an item somewhere around here that helps you find them. I'm probably going to get it because I don't know where a lot of the hidden blocks are. <laughs> At least you remembered the one um, near the beginning. Oh, that one. Yeah, that's <laughs> one of the two. That's one of the two that you can miss permanently. The other one I actually did miss permanently. <laughs> So the king is ill, um, and Prince Mallow is a giant black bird. At least that's what Queen Valentina, or Valentina, who wants to be queen, would have us believe. Unfortunately, we can't just barge in here. Of course not. That would be too easy. Hey, look, it's Mallow. <laughs> the resemblance is uncanny. So, in case you're wondering, this is pretty late in the game. Um, this is not like the last area, but it's pretty close. And here's Mario doing one of his pantomime scene reenactments. Because that is the best kind of reenactments. He's pretty good at pantomime. <laughs> yes, he's very good at pantomime. It's almost as if he actually... Like, maybe he's a ditto. Maybe. <laughs> you know, I bet this game you're playing as a ditto, who's just imitating Mario most of the time. <laughs> That's why Mario never speaks. Because he can't speak! Because all he'd say would be ditto or whatever. And then his identity would be known. So, surprise to nobody, Valentina is just trying to trick everyone. No. Good. That be sure. So, Col Sorry, Colin, have you played this game? Somewhat. Um, I pretty much, like got to the I think I got past the sewer and to the part where you're like you're with the frog guys or whatever. Oh tadpole pond. Yeah and I got around there and then I haven't played since. Anyway, so Mario is a statue now. <laughs> Wait, what? 
<laughs> this guy is the statue maker. And he made Mario look like a statue to sneak in there. And apparently he can move without, you know, he can, he can just glide along the ground now. Why couldn't Mario just pantomime a statue? I suppose he could, but how do you get around when you're doing that? That's my point. Magic! Pantomime a, um... A statue with a little propeller on the bottom that floats you around. <laughs> <laughs> no, you pantomime a statue with wheels. I like the little silly whirly propeller on the bottom thing better, though. Like a uh, Bowser's flying thing in a Mario World? Yeah, because with wheels, it's practical. With a little <laughs> It's completely impractical. You do have a point. I mean... Whoever heard of practicality in a Mario game? <laughs> I mean, we have monstrous cakes. <laughs> oh yes, I just showed them that scene. <laughs> pokey pokey poke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so guys, if you're wondering why I haven't been posting videos for a while, it's only partly because I went to Israel for uh, 10 days. It's also because I just needed a little break. But I'm back now, um, although I will not post every day. I have a couple interviews coming up. Uh, interviews are important. Yes, job interviews. Hey, job! Have we been posting anything on our channel yet, or...? <laughs> that is the bird she's trying to pa pass off as Prince Mallow. Derf! As you can see, she considers the population of Nim the populace of Nimbus Land to be pretty stupid. I don't know, would have fooled me. <laughs> I mean, the resemblance is uncanny. There's White on it, and Prince Mallow has White. I don't see any White on Dodo. Oh, maybe just the screen is kind of weird looking then. I don't know. It might be because I turned up my brightness all the way. Oh yeah, that might be. Never mind then. Okay, so what happens in this next part? I really don't know why it happens, but um, I get through it. So. <laughs> okay. So now we have to, to act like a statue. And I'm probably explaining something here. So this is a mini game sort of like the one in Booster's Tower where you have to avoid being discovered. Something like that. Especially so since since he's or maybe more like Stone Gear Mario. <laughs> I love the music here. How does that guy not realize that? Okay, I think I screwed that up right there because he pecked me. Don't you think he could tell the difference? Between... <laughs> the statue was. Yes, the statue was ticklish. Oh, okay. That still doesn't make it. Because pecks totally tickle. Especially pecks from a beak that size. Yup. I probably shouldn't. Try to quest. I should, probably shouldn't question the realism in a Mario game. Yeah. I may have jumped a bit early there. Pretty much anything can be countered with. Why not? <laughs> because Miyamoto said so. Oh, that's why. 
Why do why do the various why do like hills and clouds have eyes? Why not? Everything must have eyes in a Mario game. Even the food. The hills have eyes, Colin. The hills have eyes. Okay, I think there is where I screwed it up. <laughs> You're a winner. No, I actually screwed this up. Oh. Because that's not supposed to happen. Are you able to, like... Now you're battling it. Yes, exactly. I don't think I've ever been in this battle before, which means, like I said, that I must have screwed something up before. So, fortunately, this guy isn't too tough. He didn't take me very long to beat. Mm -hmm. That's good. I mean, if you guys look on my screen, and then you can see that a couple of thumbnails later is the uh, victory pose. Yup. And then saving. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of clips of rooms that look very similar. So apparently this guy's hungry. And Mario gives him a knuckle sandwich. Nom nom nom, knuckle sandwich. <laughs> Full of protein. <laughs> and calcium. It's like a BLT, except really disgusting. He did. <laughs> or... There's not really any meat on the knuckles anyway. Lots of calcium though, like I said. Yeah. But like, there'd be, like... There, there's nothing there. Although, I guess people like wings, and those don't really have much meat on them anyway, either, so... <laughs> what happened to his gold plating? Um... Just pretend it wasn't there. <laughs> I don't have any better explanation. It's like... It's like when someone gets wet and jumps out of the water, and they're... Or, you know, gets out of the water and they're wet in that shot, and in the next shot they're dry. Or, like, how Kirby, whenever he goes under the water, he just miraculously throws goggles and a snorkel. I have. He's Kirby. Which is way too short to actually do anything. That must be in the more recent games, because I don't remember that. Really? It's in, like, you know, like, uh. The new one for the Wii X. I think it's in Kirby's Adventure, um, the, the Game Boy Advance version's had it. Is that like Scuba Kirby? I think it looks like. Yeah, but I mean, it's just him when he's underwater. Maybe I'm just not remembering right, but usually I remember stuff in video games. It is hard to say for sure. Anyway, the enemies but, here are pretty tough, but nothing to worry about too much. I really want to play Epic Yarn. I could text my sister and say to Epic Yarn version. And I have my Wii here. Yes, we can do that. That shy guy had googly eyes before I went into battle. You want to do a blind let's play of Geist? Do you have Geist? Ah, yes! That'd be so cool. I got a whole bunch of games. I got Shadow the Hedgehog, so we can finally do that blind It's Roy game. Orbison! Star Fox Adventures, hmm. which I kind of got out of win because it's really cheap. I'm like, hey, why not? YouTube Star Fox game. Okay. Everyone hates it, so therefore <laughs> I will not play. Ah, uh, you're contrary like that. Well, like, you know, I mean, it seems like at any time anyone likes something, I don't like it in the reverse. Like, like I, how we really like FF13, and lots of people are raging. I love it. Final Fantasy 13. And, like, my roommate hates it, even though he's never played it. Well, this is the thing about any long-running series like Final Fantasy. So many people will just, you know, want... And, and I'm not accusing all of the fans of this by any means, but a lot of the fans, it seems, just want, you know, every game to be pretty much the same as the last one. And when there's a big change, then people are like, oh, it's not like it used to be. Yeah, but, everyone... Because it isn't. 
VII again, but if they actually got Final Fantasy VII again, they'd pay that too. Yo! Because they're in love with the idea of it. Exactly. It, it's like, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, then it's just going to get boring. And then, of course, you have various. If you don't do things over and over, then. Well, like, then you get really. Well. Then you get. And then, like, people are like, well, we don't want to do the same thing. And you get really wonderful things like um, El Shaddai. I, have, I, have, I, I haven't actually heard much about it. It's really pretty. <laughs> but, like, it's ludicrously pretty. I have to look that up. I've heard of it, but I've never actually looked anything up on it. I'm really, <laughs> you need to. I'm really so excited great. for Cine Mora. Oh, and uh, Nobi Nobi Boy is coming to America. Nobi Nobi Boy is here. Oh no, what a no. No, Nino Kuni, that's the one yeah, that's coming. I'm that's gonna be pretty. Here. Anyway, a running theme throughout this this dungeon is my inability to get through it without running into about every single enemy. <laughs> hmm. Well, they give you EXP and money, so it's not too bad. This is true. And battles are fairly short. So. Yes, they are. Thankfully. Oh, if they were long, I'd be cutting them out, like in FF8. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's kind of what I, I'm trying. I've, I've been trying to play some Final Fantasy X, and I, I just like beyond the horrendous storytelling and the obnoxious characters. Well, really obnoxious character. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody loves Titus. Let's face it. Um, Oran. Aaron is really he's, awesome. He's awesome. He's like the coolest character ever in anything. Because, like, he's supposed to be and, awesome. And, um, what, what, what's... Yuna is tolerable. What's his old name? What's his name again? Jekt. Jekt. Jekt is awesome, if only because he does everything. <laughs> like, saying, no, you're a fry, baby. I'm cry. And then he's even... Such a terrible I guy. love how his last lines is the, you know... I haven't played it! You guys still there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this does nothing but constantly insult Titus. So that's Titus? Titus. So, no, it's Titus. It's actually Titus. Yeah, but Titus sounds dumb. Well, no, he is dumb, so there. <laughs> <laughs> I actually mind him a lot less than most people do, I think. Is he, I sort of thought that Vanille was like that, and then I discovered that the voice actress was actually Australian. And then I thought, oh, okay, I guess that must be what the accent actually sounds like then. <laughs> what I find pretty interesting is, um, is that, like, Vanille, she kind of starts off pretty obnoxious, but she kind of, like, not only does she kind of, like, become more tolerable over time, but, like, the more you kind of learn about her and the more she kind of develops as a character, not only the more kind of, I guess, understanding of the character you are, but also I think her voice acting becomes less annoying. Hmm. Which I don't, which I don't know why, but it might just be, like, because you get used to it or, like, because certain things have caused her to kind of tone it down a little, but... <laughs> Like, she can't pretend to be quite that peppy anymore. <laughs> yeah, basically. Because she gets really depressed at one point in the game. So I really wish that Mallow was going first in these battles, because he can do that. <laughs> I probably could make him go first if I had the presence of mind to go into my equipment and equip him with the speed shoes or whatever. Can't do that post-commentary now, can't No, you? can't. But Jen, since you haven't played this game, you can't be a backseat player. Yep. <laughs> Although I have had people be backseat players when they haven't played the game before. <laughs> Absolutely no idea what's going on. 
so I'm just like, whatever.